Hello guys, today we want to read the slides about public key infrastructure and the transport layer protocol. So, um, the, in the previous lecture, we studied about elliptic curves, which are uh, which are uh, a, a curve that follow this equation. And not all of them are secure. We have to choose specific types that are proven to be uh, secure. And uh, the electric curve uh, prog problem, uh, cryptography problem, is that we have a given P, which everyone knows, and a, a given point X, which also it is known. But how can we find K to obtain X? And we studied that it is better than RSA and Diffie-Hellman, uh, but not always, um, because it provides the same security, but with much smaller keys. And uh, one of the most um, uh, modern uh, uh, examples that are based on elliptic curve are the LTS 1.3 and the... Um, uh, elliptic curve is usually not used for encryption like I said it's not always better than RSA it's not good for encryption uh, it's worse than uh, RSA but usually for encryption we use symmetric key cryptography so the key exchange algorithm used is the elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman uh, either this curve or this curve and similarly for digital signature, elliptic curve, uh, digital signature algorithm, and uh, uh, this is short for Edward, uh, digital signature algorithm, and these are the, um, uh, the when we use this curve, this is what we call it, and when we use the 448 curve, uh, we call it Ed448. So this is a summary. Uh, we can say that key exchange, uh, here are the problems, the cryptography problem. So we have the factoring and uh, uh, the discrete log problem and the elliptic curve discrete log problem. So um, uh, these are the, prob the cryptography problems and these are the algorithms that are based on uh, these uh, problems. So uh, the, uh, the Diffie-Hellman and the RSA and the elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman. Then we have the RSA OAP, El Gamal, which is based on DLP, and the elliptic elliptic curve um, integrated uh, uh, integrated encryption scheme. I think the RSA PSS. And this is for digital signature. Um, here we have Ed DSA is based on Schnorr, and we have Ed DSA, uh, sorry, EC DSA is based on Elgama. So uh, this is also a review for last lecture. So uh, the three forms of elliptic curves are, I think, the waist stress. And uh, okay, so here we have the wire stress curve, and I think the other one is the Edward curve, uh, and the Montgomery curve, and the Edward curve. The discrete log problem, as we said before, it's about finding K. Um, it's preferred over RSA for its smaller keys. And um, uh, it's not defined over a multiplicative cyclic group, so this is false. And uh, one of the examples for key exchange is the elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman. For encryption is this EC. Uh, CIS, uh, wait, Integrated uh, Encryption Scheme, I, uh, okay, 
and the digital signature we have the EDSA and the ECDSA EECIES and finally um, the answer is zero because when whatever line that intersects three points that the result will be zero this is the definition so let's start with our lecture and let's read the slides um, first of all the public key infrastructure so um, we studied that we need a public key uh, for public key cryptography but how can we send the public key so if we send it uh, directly uh, this is what this is the steps of sending the public key uh, directly so she generates the public key secret key then she decrypts the message then she just sends him the public key and sorry she doesn't de decrypt the message now first she gives him the public key he encrypts the message with her public key and then he sends her sends her the ciphertext and then she just decrypts the ciphertext to the message but we have a malware this is a problem so scenario one which is to send the key directly is not a good problem why because we have man in the middle why because this man in the middle can uh, is actually come in the middle and take her public key which is she's sending and then forge a new public key and then send him a public key uh, a prime which he thinks is from alice and then he sends her the cipher text uh, but use but encrypting uh, with the um, Mallory's public key and then sending it then Mallory will take the message and decrypt it with his secret key so we have a second scenario which is using a third party and uh, the third party acts as a uh, like an extra authentication for Bob because he only receives he requests the public key from the third trusted third party so he knows it's not from Mallory um, so what happens is that she generates a public key and a secret key but then she uh, registers it to the third party but then when when Bob wants to encrypt a message he will not directly take it from her he will request it from a third trusted party which verifies that okay so uh, we have a problem uh, what if like he will request it from the third party but we have the same issue i mean he can he can create a public key and say that i am alice and then give it to the trusted third party then you know what I'm saying, that he can just be in place of Alice. So um, the reason this happens is because the third party doesn't authenticate Mallory and accepts PKA as Alice. So how do we solve this issue? Okay, we have another issue actually. Uh, if, uh, well, not authenticating Alice makes a problem, but also how can how can bob authenticate the third party i mean mallory can come and say that i am the trusted third party and i can give you the public key of alice even though uh, he's just fake and anyone can act as a third party you know so this is another problem so this is when uh, public key infrastructure uh, wants to solve you know, wants to solve this issue so Alice's signature help solving this problem does will Alice's signature help solve this problem the answer is no because as we saw seen before Mallory can make a fake public key and pretend to be Alice and then it will be a valid signature because uh, Mallory can decrypt it and uh, for a proper authentication we use a public key infrastructure so this is when public key infrastructure comes to place um, so it's saying here that we are only going to discuss the surface 
not uh, go into deep. So first of all, uh, the public key infrastructure introduces a certification authority and it contains the public keys, which is just the third party. And the CA, what does it do? It binds identities by issuing digital certificates that confirm a particular public key really belongs to the person it claims. So it solves the first problem. It solves the first problem by authenticating Mallory. Like he can't act as Alice because this, now we'll see how. So he will call. They will simply just call. So they will not, she, first of all, she wants to generate a public key. So what does she do? First, she requests a certificate from the trusted third party. But the trusted third party will need to authenticate that really this is Alice. How can we give her, how can we be sure that this is Alice? So uh, they call her and then they authenticate that this is Alice and not Mallory. And uh, in this case, they have a certificate. Then. He will request a third certificate from the third party and to solve the second problem actually he will also authenticate the third party the trusted third party how he will verify uh, he will verify the certificate using the public key of the third party which is the ca okay so if it's one that means yes that it is from the ca and it's verified and uh, so this is the steps uh, alice generates her pub her keys and asks the ca to bind her identity to her public key by requesting a certificate the ca authenticates alice's identity offline this is the only way to actually authenticate uh, alice or in physically you know then uh, it creates a digital certificate to certify Alice's ownership of the public key uh, using the CA's private key okay so it is signed by the um, secret key of the CA okay so what does this mean that means that you can verify it is from the CA using its public key. So Bob requests Alice's public key and then he receives it, but then he wants to verify it is from the third party, the trusted third party. He will uh, use the public key of the CA and it will uh, verify. Okay. Um, so i want to say something that um, note that the third party trusted third party uh, signs all the certificates and all the public keys and everything with their secret key what does this mean this means that if this if they lose this secret key all of the keys are doomed you know Okay, so how does Bob make sure that the public key really belongs to the CA? Ah, because, uh, yani, he didn't call, right? How does he know this is not Mallory that's sending him a fake uh, public uh, uh, key? You know, if he's sending him a fake certificate encrypted by a fake secret key from Mallory, then and then he sends him the fake public key, then he can... Uh, verify it will be one but with a different um, public key um, so how does he know that this is really the public key well the solution is that it, the key is embedded inside of the chrome the browser firefox edge the operating system windows mac and all of them this way you can uh, make sure you have the correct public key for the ca and of course, uh, the public key infrastructure is more complicated because sometimes the uh, someone can change uh, the forge, the availability, the validity, validity date of the certificate because you know it ends. And sometimes if it gets compromised or you lose the key, 
uh, or you get hacked and you want to revoke the certificate. Uh, so this is complicated, a complicated process. Now for the transport layer protocol. Um, so uh, what is it? Uh, first of all, it's يعني, when people before they wanted to establish communication. Um, okay, so originally this what is TLS? Originally decided and pub decide, designed and published by Netscape, and later adopted by the Internet Engineering Task Force. And the transport layer standard is the protocol used on the internet for securing communications. Okay, so this is how they build the co this, the communication, and uh, of course they provide some security uh, features like confidentiality, authentication, integrity. Um, okay, so first, uh, before people were focusing on establishing a connection and not really on the security side, so SSL uh, was. Uh, published was never published because it had many issues uh, so attacks were found and then uh, they were solved and then they it became used but then they adopt a new um, a new um, a new يعني, structure new update so they called it TLS uh, 1.0 and then um, uh, they again they uh, found some attacks and they fixed it then they found some more attacks and they fixed it then it become wildly used then again what happened is a revamp this time because you know at this stage we have a, uh, uh, we have established a connection and now the focus is always on bad security so instead of like uh, fixing 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 they revamp they they created from scratch a new system um, which actually is built based on a good security so they removed all the vulnerabilities and draft uh, one uh, up to 28 which was approved and then it's widely used now today so this is just uh, what uh, implementation and uh, uh, support what um, so we are here and um, uh, the wolf SSL supports the TLS 1.3 the matrix SSL and uh, this is very widely used the open SSL supports up to uh, okay so this is how we can compare the old SSL and the new TLS sorry the old STLS and the new TLS this is 1.2 this 1.3 so 1.2 has so many options so many uh, you know so many things you can do it's very okay but the new one but here you have lots of يعني you have lots of holes you have lots of vulnerabilities there are maybe some good good okay this is actually a menu okay so you might find some good food but you have to look very 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 hard and most likely you will stumble upon some bad food okay but this is the new menu this is the new TLS so uh, they remove they discard all of the bad stuff and they keep just a little bit of the good stuff. Yani only the good stuff they keep it. Um, this is like a menu. This this is a good menu. All of it is good food. Uh, but this is a big menu with lots of options, but it's mostly bad food. Okay, so uh, here we can compare the new one. Uh, it has a major rewrite. This, but the old one is just a fix, fix, fix of the problems. The new one is simple with less options, but it's good. It has high security. It's uh, uh, no attacks so far. And the configuration of the old one is complicated, but it's highly configurable. So there's so many options, but so many attacks, you know, it's very easy to get attacked. 
So the, the performance, the new one is much, much, much faster. It's only one round trip for the handshake protocol, but the uh, old one is two round trips. For the security, it uh, keeps only the secure algorithms and discard all the rest, but this one contains all. Uh, okay, so what has uh, TLS 1.3 removed? So it has removed all the weak ciphers like RC4, DES3, DES AES, CVC, and all the old uh, broken hash functions like MD5 and SHA1, and uh, the key exchange algorithms um, such as the RSA and uh, the uh, and but they restricted the Diffie-Hellman to only specific parameters that are known to be secure and in TLS 1.2 uh, it was any parameters are available yani, but now only for the so um, it added a few algorithms like the AEAD. We studied this before, uh, which combines encryption and MAC. So it supports only uh, the following, ASGCM, ASCCM. Yani, this is what it supports, only these algorithms AES and cha cha 20 poly 1305 and for the digital signatures it supports RSA PSS and ECDSA and EDDSA and the hash functions SHA-256, 384, but still waiting for SHA-3 and the key exchange like the classical Diffie-Hellman but only these groups and the elliptic curve the Fehelman, only these curves. So it, uh, uh, TLS 1.3 defines cipher suits, which are packages of cipher agreed upon between communicating parties. These cipher suits are performed as follows. So if I want to establish a communication, we will send this cipher suit, which me which yani this is the this is the uh, how the definition it is. First, we define this, then the A E A D, and the hash function. So this is how it is. T L S. Then this is the A E A D, and then this is the SHA two five six. So which one of these is the best? Well, we know that it is the uh, A E S two five six because it's has a larger key and. That's it. So it consists of two protocols, the handshake protocol and the record protocol. The handshake protocol, you know, it's the three-way handshake. Um, allow client and server to authenticate, exchange keys, agree on a cipher suit to secure the communication. Can either be a single round trip or a zero round trip and we will uh, elaborate on that more and the record protocol which defines the format of the traffic exchange between the client and the server throughout the protocol so during the handshake and later during the communication the one round uh, uh, one round protocol is uh, uh, follows three steps it was reduced to a single round trip between the client and the server uh, in TLS 1.3. So in step one, uh, the client sends a hello message and sends the cipher suit, which we saw the definition of it before, and uh, generates the Diffie-Hellman private public keys and sends the Diffie-Hellman public key. In the second step, uh, the server does the same. He sends the server certificate and confirms the cipher suit proposed by the client and then generates the Diffie-Hellman private and public keys and sends the, pub, uh, the public key signature. Okay. Uh, generates 
based on the client's private public key sorry okay then in step three they verify the, the client verifies the server certificate using the CA's public key uh, which it should be signed by the certificate authority and uh, verifies the server's signature using the server's public key and calculates a shared key using its private key and the server's public key then it will establish a secure channel with the server and start transmitting data securely so this is just like he sent the public key then they generate after generating its keys and then the certificates are verified and they send each other the public keys and from the public keys they can generate the, and their private keys they can generate the uh, keys that they can use so what is a zero day uh, i sorry a zero round uh, first, let's see a comparison between the one round. Uh, before it was this way, but now it's just one, two, and then three. Before it was like one, two, three, and then, you know, they can establish communication. Uh, the zero round trip. Actually, uh, this one is the, uh, se a session resumption. Uh, like if I make a communication with you and I want to finish the communication, but what I do is uh, I, um, I uh, like save this information that maybe after two, maybe three years, I want to communicate with you again then we can make a session resumption. We can use this feature, which allows me to make, establish communication with you without uh, the three-way handshake protocol, yani without doing it all over again. So it's, uh, it's reduced to zero. And uh, uh, this is the record protocol. The record protocol is a, a traffic exchange uh, it determines the traffic exchange by the client and server. The records are used to transmit handshake traffic. And the records are also used to transmit encrypted data once has handshake is established. Mm. So we studied, we have the two protocols. The record protocol is defining the traffic exchange between the format of traffic exchanged. So this is what it looks like. And I think we are... Okay, so popular security protocols include IPsec or IPSec, IPsec Internet Protocol Security, a su suite, a suite, a su suite of protocols operating at uh, the network layer provide uh, communication security. So it's mostly used in VPN and site-to-site uh, -site VPN and remote access VPN. And SSH Secure Shell is an application layer protocol providing secure connection over unsecure network mostly used for remote administration login and fire transfer uh, but can be used to secure any application traffic okay so i think we are done and so these are advances in cryptography the multi-party computation MPC, which uh, means that there are uh, many uh, parties, it's not one-on-one -on -one communication, and uh, they want to be protected, like Alice wants to be protected from everyone. Yani, okay, so without knowing other people inputs, like for me, I, I'm inside a group, but I don't want, I'm, I don't want the group to know my information. And fully homomorphic encryption 
uh, is little bit similar, but uh, actually it's different. It means like Alice has some secret information that she wants to do some operations on, but she does not want Bob to know this information. So, but she wants Bob to solve the issue for her. Like she has some computation that she wants to do and she wants Bob to compute it. So the first one is the NPC. Um, it's uh, uh, it started in the 1980s. Uh, it was only a theory, but now it is practical. So it allows multiple parties to collectively compute a function without any party revealing their inputs. Like like I said, Alice she wants to uh, compute some. Like this is a function she wants to compute some information to get some information about her input but she doesn't want them to know and all of them are the same as alice they don't want them alice to know so uh, usually uh, we consider the adversary like mallory and eve to be outside of the system but in the npc it is uh, inside of the system mallory is inside of the system So, like this is just an example, like uh, this is her salary and she wants to know the average salary, but she doesn't want Charlie to know that her salary is a thousand, but at the same time they still want to um, uh, find the average salary, so how can they find the average salary without telling each other? So the idea is that she will add some random number to her salary and send it to Bob and Bob will then send the total like he will add his uh, value to the value he obtained and just send it to Charlie and Charlie will do the same and send it to Alice and then Alice will calculate the uh, average but first by subtracting her number that she added uh, first in the first step and this way they can calculate the uh, the average without um, but of course there's an issue because like if she knows the average is 1033 she knows that she's like uh, below average so this is a problem and this is another example like another solution would be to break the information into two like she would break her thousand salary into 500 and 500 and then only send one of the 500 because there's many possibilities of a random break so they will all do the same and then they will do the computation and the computation will follow this uh, this uh, this way Uh, these are some algorithms that are used in NPC and now uh, for the fully homomorphic encryption like like I said she wants to compute do some hard computation which is a very difficult problem but uh, she doesn't want Bob to know her parameters so she sends a encrypted data and he will do the operation on the encrypted data and then send her the same encrypted data and only she can decrypt this data and obtain the solution uh, but this is uh, still your name um, there are some examples like the logarithmic uh, so this is some examples that uh, uh, like uh, today it will allow you to do any other operations like like it supports like we have today we have partial homomorphic encryption which supports only one operation just add or multiplication and then we have a somewhat homomorphic encryption which supports add and multiply with circuits with low uh, depth and uh, the leveled fully homomorphic encryption uh, supports any number of add and multiplication, but it's bounded, so it's polynomial depth. So not everything. And these are examples of some. Okay. 
So PKC solves the problem of exchanging secret keys while digital signatures solves the problem of authentication. However, it doesn't stop attackers. This is why we have PKI, which binds identities to public keys. Um, and the TLS is the workhorse of the internet, ensuring communication security. And the new TLS is the latest version, uh, which is supported and used over. Okay.